पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी एट माने तंग वे द रिवर अपवर्ड वॉज फ्लोइंग ओपनली एट इट्स स्वीट विल विदाउट एनी बाउंड्री बट एट अटक इट हैज टू लिमिट इट्स वेव इन टू अ नैरो पाथ दिस पाथ लुक्स लाइक अ प्रजन वेन इट्स वॉटर्स आर सडनली कन्फाइंड राइट फ्रॉम अटक टू कालाबाग द रिवर फ्लो सराउंडेड ऑन बोथ साइड्स बाई बिग हिल्स एंड प्रजेंट्स अ रोमांटिक सीन इन शॉर्ट ऑन रीचिंग अटक द इंडस एंटर्स माउंटेन्स इट्स वॉटर दैन फ्लोज थ्रू अ नैरो माने तंग एंड रॉकी पाथ फ्रॉम अटक टू कालाबाग द राइटर कॉल्स दीज टू प्लेस एज फैटर्स ऑफ इंडस रिवर्स बिकॉज इट्स पाथ थ्रू द रॉक्स इज लाइक अ प्रजन वेयर इट्स वॉटर्स आर कैप्ट कन्फाइंड एट कालाबाग इट इज सेट फ्री अगेन नंबर थ्री फ्री एट कालाबाग एट कालाबाग इट कम्स आउट ऑफ इट्स फैटर्स एंड द वॉटर्स आर सेट फ्री सून द वॉटर फ्लोज वाइड स्प्रेड द रॉक्स बिगिन टू गिव वे टू सैंड फील्ड which are spread for miles and miles as a result of this the river flows in as wide a way as it likes right after kalabagh down to the plains of sindh where after it enters the arabian sea thus we see that indus indus has two fetters one at atak and the other at kalabagh at atak it has to confine itself into a narrow way it is the same confined way for miles and miles from atak to kalabagh It is out of its fetters and gets released once again and flows at its own sweet will. Its waters spread as wide an area as possible. After Kalabagh it does not have any fetters. So the writer is fully justified in saying the Indus in fetters. The title corresponds mane mutabakat rakhna with the subject matter. Page number 29. Question number 3. Today I Cork screwed down the kohat side of the mountain so as to see Indus in his fetters page 11 this line has been taken from the indus in fetters by aj toimbi describe in your words the passage from kohat to the atak bridge and what the writer saw there or at first glance he seems to be gliding over so slowly but when you watch the eddies on hither side you realize how swiftly they are chasing each other each one of them eager to reach the exit from the prison where the hurrying waters can once again expand and relax page 12 these sentences have been taken from the indus in fetters in east and west given appreciation of the scene of the indus as seen by arnold j toimbi from the khushal gar rail and road bridge gomal university 2003 answer number 1 the passage from kohat to atak In this lesson the writer has described his journey by car from Kohat Pass to the Khushalgarh bridge from here he saw the river Indus flowing through mountains the writer had to go to Kohat he passed through Kohat Pass he stood on the roof of the Kohat Pass and saw the Kohat cantonment mane chauni far below it looked very tiny the passage mane rasta leading to it is very dangerous mane khatarnak The mountain runs down to plains in a series of steps while page number 30 the road turns round them steeply driving on this road is frightening mane darane wala one slip could be fatal mane mohlak the passage leading to the atak bridge is more terrifying mane dromna while driving the car the writer exercised the utmost mane intahai care because the roads were very dangerous The large and vast range, mane silsila, of chocolate-colored hillock seemed like frozen waves of a grand ocean, mane samandar, in storm. The writer was much thrilled, mane josh ana, by the strange-looking sight. The Indus was flowing through such a strange pass. Number two, the river enters into mountains. At Atak, the rivers, the river enters into mountains. The widespread waters of Indus are suddenly confined. माने मुकैद होना टू अ नैरो वे दे आर रॉक्स नियर अटक एंड द पुअर रिवर हैज टू लिमिट इट्स वेव इन टू अ नैरो पाथ इट फ्लोज थ्रू द नैरो एंड रॉकी पाथ फ्रॉम अटक टू कालाबाग इट इज सराउंडेड ऑन बोथ साइड्स बाय बिग हिल्स द राइटर कॉल्स इट इन दिस इन फेटर्स इट्स पाथ लुक्स लाइक अ प्रिजन माने जेल एट कालाबाग द वॉटर्स कम आउट ऑफ द चेन एंड सेट फ्री अगेन The waves move very fast. It seems that it is in a great hurry to reach an exit. It flows in as wide a way as it likes. Number three, the writer enjoyed the view. The writer spent the whole day at Atak. He enjoyed Mane Lutf the view. He saw a shepherd Mane Gadaria. 
He was pushing his sheep into an inlet, Mane Khadi, of the river. The sheep looked frightened, Mane Khovzada. He could not understand why the shepherd was treating the sheep so harshly. He thought that the shepherd was either a mad, Mane Pagal, or a devil incarnate, Mane Shaitan Shakal Insan. Page number 31. But he was neither of the two. He was amazed, Mane Heran Hona, to see that the sheep were brave. They went under the water, came up again and climbed on the other bank of the river. They shook their bodies like dogs, who do the same when they come out of the water. He remembered that European sheep did not like water and were covered, Mane Buzdil. He was much pleased to see such a fine scene. He was convinced, Mane Yakin, of the superiority of the Middle Eastern sheep. He thought that Khushal Khan was right to compare the bravery, Mane Bahadri, of this tribe to the sheep. Question number four. Give an appreciation of the scene of the Indus as seen by the author Arnold J. Toynbee from the Khushal Girl Rail and Road Bridge. Or, how was Arnold J. Toynbee affected by the scene as he stood on the rail and road bridge of Khushal Girl? Answer. Number one. The scene of the Indus. Arnold J. Toynbee was a famous historian. He travelled from Kohat Pass to Khushal Girl Bridge. He says that he was standing on the rail and road bridge, Mane Pul, of Hoshalgar. He looked down at the river Indus flowing below him. He was much impressed, Mane Mutas Sirhua, to see the scene of the river Indus flowing below from the rail and road bridge of Hoshalgar. He was much thrilled, Mane Joshana, by the strange looking sight. The river was flowing through a strange path, Mane Rasta. It was flowing, rather gliding, Mane Ahista Ahista Chalna. Page number 32. At its own sweet will. The river seemed to be happy at its release, Mane Rehai, from the hills. Number 2. A beautiful sight. Looking from the bridge, he saw a beautiful sight. He saw a shepherd, Mane Gadaria, with his flock, Mane Gala, of sheep. The shepherd was busy with his sheep. The sheep were coming towards the water of the river. Soon they began to enter the water. He was much surprised, Mane Heran Hua, to see them going into the water one after the other. They bathed happily in the water and then began to swim. Mane Terna. They reached the other bank of the river. They shook their bodies like dogs who do the same when they come out of the water. The writer was much pleased, Mane Khushua, to see such a fine scene. He enjoyed it very much. He was convinced, Mane Yakin Hona, of the superiority of the Middle Eastern sheep. He thought that Khushal Khan rightly compared the bravery of his tribe to the sheep. Number 3. Remembered European sheep. He remembered, Mane Yad Kiya, that European sheep did not like water. They were covered, Mane Buzdil. They would die of panic. The sheep down the bridge were brave sheep. They were a symbol, Mane Alamat, of bravery, Mane Bahadri. He remembered that the great Pashto poet, Khushal Khan Khatak, wrote about the bravery of his tribesmen, Mane Kabila, and used the word sheep-like to explain their brave attitude, Mane Ravaya. He compares Mane Mukabla Karna, these sheep, with a European sheep and enjoys the scene. He had a lot of time at his disposal. He stood there and went on looking at the beautiful sight, Mane Khubsurat Manzar, for a long time. He was much impressed by it. The scene was grand, Mane Ala, the river Indus was flowing. Page number 33, freely and happily at its sweet will. It was coming out of the large mountain fetters. A flock of sheep was bathing and swimming in its water. The writer wished to see the scene again and again. Page number 33 continued. Chapter number 3. A Tell Like Jericho. Urdu Tarjuma. Musannif hume char sadda ke tile ke mutalik batata hai. Wo kehta hai ki ye tila urdun ke hariko tile ke manin malum hota hai. Wo ek tile par khada ho jata hai. Wo sochta hai. कि कशन खानदान की हुकूमत से पहले चार सद्दा गंदारा का दारुल हुकूमत था कशन खानदान के हुक्मरानों ने पिशावर को अपना दारुल हुकूमत बनाया इसके तीन तरफ बड़े-बड़े पहाड़ हैं और चौथी सिमत दरियाए सिंध वाके है चार सद्दा का इलाका बहुत जरखेज है लंबार्डी और दमिश के मानंद यह इलाका बड़ा सरसब्ज है गंदारा के इलाका में दरियाओं का पानी ऊंची नीची पहाड़ियों में कैद होकर बहता है जो ही यह दरिया पहाड़ों से निकलकर मैदानी इलाका में आता है तो बहुत तेजी का मुजाहिरा करता है यह मंजर काबिल दीद है मुसन्नफ ने इस सिलसिला में तीन मिसालें दी हैं पहली मिसाल दरियाए काबुल की है 
جو وارسک پر پوری قوت سے آزاد ہو کر بہتا ہے دوسری مثال دریائے سندھ کی ہے جو امب کے نیچے پوری شدت سے بہتا ہے اور تیسری مثال دریائے سوات کی ہے جو عباس عبازی پر آ کر اچانک ارد گرد کی پہاڑیوں سے آزادی پاتے ہی زور شور سے بہتا ہے دریاؤں سے کئی نہریں نکالی گئی ہیں جنہوں نے اس علاقے کو سرسبز بنا دیا ہے تقریباً تین ہزار سال کی تہذیب اس کے دامن میں منہ لپیٹے سوئی پڑی ہے تہذیب بنتی رہی اور مٹتی رہی نئی تہذیبیں ابھری اور پھر مٹ گئیں ہر تہذیب کے مٹنے کے بعد چار صدہ کا ٹیلا اور زیادہ اونچا ہو گیا چار صدہ کا ٹیلا تین ہزار سال تک گندارہ تہذیب کا مرکز رہا ہریکو کا ٹیلا اس سے بھی قدیم ہے چار صدہ کا ٹیلا آج سے پندرہ سولہ سو سال پہلے اونچا ہونا بند ہو گیا ہن قوم نے اسے تباہ کیا تو اس کے بعد اس کی شان و شوکت بحال نہ ہو سکی یہاں نئی تہذیب کی آمد رک گئی مصنف نے شب قدر کا شہر بھی دیکھا یہاں ایک قلعہ تعمیر کیا گیا ہے اس قلعہ قلعے کی دو منزلیں ہیں بالائی منزل فرنگی دور کی ہے جبکہ زیری منزل سکھوں کے دور کی ہے اب یہ قلعہ افواج پاکستان کے قبضہ میں ہے چار صدہ سے مشرق کی طرف تخت بائی کی پہاڑی پیج نمبر تھرٹی فور ہے یہ ایک ہزار فٹ بلند ہے یہاں بدو کی خانقاہ بھی ہے جہاں بدھ رہبر روحانی سکون کے لیے عبادت کیا کرتے تھے نیچے شہر بہلول ہے جو آثار قدیمہ کے متوالوں کے لیے ایک جنت ہے امپورٹنٹ کوشچنس کوشچن نمبر ون آئی ہیو ناٹ یٹ سین اے ٹاؤن لائک ایلس پر ہاپس دا ایلس از یونیک بٹ ٹو ڈے آئی ہیو سین اے ٹیل لائک جیریکو آئی ایم اسٹینڈنگ آن دا سمٹ آف دا گریٹر آف دا ٹو گریٹ ماؤنٹس ایٹ چار سڈا پیج فورٹین دی سینٹینسز آر ٹیکن فرام ٹوئم بیز ایسے دا انڈس ان فیٹوز اسٹیٹ ان یور اون ورڈس وٹ ہی فردر رائٹس اباؤٹ دا گندارا سولائزیشن اینڈ چار سدا اور اف یو کین امیجن اے بلینڈ بٹوین لمباڈی اینڈ گٹھا آف ڈومیسکس یو ول بی ایبل ٹو کنجر اپ گندارا ان یور مائنڈس آئی دیز لائنس ہیو بین ٹیکن فرام اے ٹیل لائک ٹیریکو بائی آرنل جی ٹوئم بی ڈسکرائب ان یور اون ورڈس وٹ آرنل جی ٹوئم بی ہیز ٹو سی اباؤٹ چار سدا دا شب قدر فورٹ اینڈ دا بدھسٹ مونیسٹری ایٹ تخت بائی اور سکس اینڈ برٹش ان دیئر ٹرنس ہیو کم اینڈ گون اینڈ دا مونیومنٹس آف دیئر فلیٹنگ آکیوپیشن ٹیسٹیفائی ٹو دا ٹرانزیٹورینس آف ہیومن ایفرٹس اینڈ اچیومنٹس پیج نمبر تھرٹی فائیو دیز لائنس ہیو بین ٹیکن فرام اے ٹیل لائک جیریکو ڈسکرائب ان یور اون ورڈس وٹ ٹائم بی ہیز سیٹ اباؤٹ دا ماؤنٹ آف چار سدا دا فورٹ آف شب قدر تخت بائی اینڈ بدھسٹ مونیسٹری ایٹ تخت بائی آنسر دا ماؤنٹ آف چار سدا دا رائٹر ڈسکرائبس دا وزٹ ٹو چار سدا اینڈ تخت بھائی ہی سیز دیٹ چار سدا واز دا کیپٹل آف گندارا ان اولڈن ڈیز اٹ از سراؤنڈیڈ مانے گھرا ہوا بائی ماؤنٹینس ایٹ تھری سائڈس and the river Kabul on the fourth side. For many centuries, it played a very important role in the overland route between India and the rest of the world. The mound of Charsadda is like a giant footstool which seems to have been planted squarely in a big court. The area of the court is 40 by 50 miles. The great mound at Charsadda is the embodiment Mani Amli Izhar of old civilization, Mani Tehzeeb, Different layers, Mani Teh, of the Charsadda mounds represent different ages of Gandhara civilization and old culture from time to time. The mound is situated on the ruins of the old cities. Cities were destroyed and reduced to ruins. The new cities were built on the ruins of the old cities. This process continued, Mani Jari Raha, for a long time. Charsadda mound presents the age of 3,000 years. It travels from old time to the second Mani Gharad Gari by the Huns in the 5th or 6th AD. The later age did hardly change it. Charsadda resembled in closely with Jericho, the oldest city of the world near Jordan. The mound of Jericho is older than this mound. Page number 36. There is enough fertile Mane Zarkhez land near Charsadda. There is superb Mane Shandar greenery everywhere. It is all due to the flowing rivers. It is rich with powerful waters. The main crops of the area are wheat, rice and sugar cane. This place is also suited for fruit such as apricots, mani khobani, oranges, 
plums and pears maninashpati the writer makes a comparison of the fertile and green land of charsadda with the land of lombardy and gutta of damascus number 2 the fort of shabkadar the shabkadar fort mani kila is situated on a hill it has two stories mani manzile the lower story was built by six while the upper story remains mani yaad dilana as of the british two missing links the british and sikh ages can be seen here today there is the garrison of pakistan army's frontier force in this fort the later deposits of civilization that are missing at charsadda are present in the shabkadar fort the fort of shabkadar reminds the world that human efforts are in vain mani besood the fort was one occupied by the six and british but their position was for a short time the six and the british have gone for a long while the fort still stands here only their monument are left behind number 3 takht bai takht bai is an important landmark mane hadnuma in the gandhara civilization it is a little mountain it is about 1000 feet high from the sea level the steep shoulders of takht bai carry the grand remains and ruins of buddhist monasteries number 4 the buddhist monasteries the buddhist monasteries mane khan kahe are situated on the top of takht bai near the village of shahre behlol these page number 37 monasteries tell us a lot and give us first hand knowledge about the ancient civilization of the area the monks mane rahib used to lead a pious mane pakiza and simple life in order to get salvation they wanted to escape from the cycle of rebirth they might have achieved it the remains of the buddhist monasteries are important not from religious point of view but from archaeolo- archaeological mane ilm asare qadim point of view the ruins of monasteries depict mane alfaz mein tasveer a calm and serenity question number 2 describe the scene as seen from the mound near charsadda how does it impress arnold j toynbee or what do you know about the mound near charsadda and the surrounding area what does arnold j toynbee feel while looking at it answer the mount of charsadda charsadda was the capital mani darul hukumat of gandhara before kushan family arnold j toynbee visited it he went to the mound of charsadda he wondered mane hairan hona at the past grandeur mane badai azmat of the area he says that the mount of charsadda is like a giant footstool which seems to have been planted mane gardana by large mountains at three sides and by river kabul at the fourth side the area of the court is 40 to 50 miles it is the embodiment mane namuna of all civilization different layers mane tehe of mount charsadda represent माने नुमाइंदगी करना डिफरेंट एजेस माने जमाने ऑफ गंदारा सिविलाइजेशन पेज नंबर 38 नंबर 2 फर्टाइल प्लेन्स देयर आर इनफ प्लेन्स नियर चारसद्दा दीस आर वेरी फर्टाइल माने जरखेज देयर आर लाइव्स एट टॉल ग्रीन पॉपुलर्स इफ वन सीज डाउन फ्रॉम द माउंट ऑफ चारसद्दा यू विल फाइंड ऑर्किड्स माने बागात एंड फील्ड्स देयर इज ग्रीनरी एवरीवेयर इट इज ऑल ड्यू टू द चैनल्स mane neher into which river kabul is divided to join the river indus this plain is rich with powerful waters it is well irrigated these waterways have made this plain fertile and green the channels flow at the speed of bullock cart between the green banks overhung with trees number 3 crops the plain is suited for various mane mukhtalif crops sugar cane wheat and rice are the main crops of the area there are orchards mane bagat of pears mane nashpati plums and apricots mane khubani arnold j toynbee has compared the fertile and green land of charsadda with the land of lombardy and gutta of damascus number 4 seat of gandhara civilization charsadda is the place where the civilization of gandhara grew and developed mane tarakki ki 4000 years ago mane qabl it was the seat of government till it was transferred mane muntakil hona from charsadda to peshawar by kushan number 5 scene of savat river the scene of savat river at abazai is an important feature of this plain arnold g toynbee was much excited to see the feats mane kartab 
of the mountain rivers. He saw the feats of River Sawat at Abazai and of River Kabul at Warsak. These rivers flow closed in fetters, Mane Bediya, of mountains. As they enter the plains, they rush at full speed like a shell shooting. Page number thirty-nine. Fourth, from the mouth of a cannon, the River Sawat at Abazai is so powerful and that, in spite of a big canal taken away from it, its force does not lessen. Mane kam hona. This thing adds to the fertility and greenery of the plains of Charsadda. Number six. Archaeological grounds. This plain is also important from archaeological point of view. Mane nukta nazar. It was the seat of Gandhara culture for a long time. It has played a very important role in the overland route between India and the rest of the world. Question number three. What is the importance of Shabkadar and Takhtbai in the cultural history of Gandhara civilization? Or, how are Shabkadar and Takhtbai important in Gandhara civilization? Answer. Number one, Shabkadar. Shabkadar Fort, Mane Kila, is situated on a hill. It has two stories, Mane Manzil. The lower story was built by six. The upper story was built by the British. The lower story represents Mane Numaindgi, the early nineteenth century Sikh age. The upper story represents the Victorian age. The two links, the Sikh and the English age, can be seen at the fort of Shabkadar. Once it was the seat of Sikh and the English rule. Today there is the garrison of Pakistan Army Frontier Force in the fort. Charsadda Mount tells us about the cultural history of the Gandhara age. It pre- presents the age of three thousand years. It travels from old times to the sacking by the Huns in. Page number forty, the fifth or sixth century A.D. The Gandhara age begins from the ancient Mane Kadim age and ends by the beginning of the modern era. It does not tell about the past few years, the Sikh and the English period. It is a period which is missing in the Charsadda Mound. It is the Shabkada Fort that tells about this period. It throws light on the Sikh and English invasion, Mane Hamla. The cultural effect of hundred and fifty years are visible in the fort of Shabkada. Number two, Takhtbai. Takhtbai is a little but perfect mountain. It is one thousand feet high from the sea level. It is an important landmark in the Gandhara civilization. It stands proudly and majestically, Mane Shan se, above the village of Shehre Behlul. The steep shoulders of Takhtbai carry the grand, Mane Azim, remains of Buddhist monasteries. Time has been destroying human, Mane Insani, civilization again and again. But there is one monument that has defeated time. If we go towards east from Charsadda to Takhtbai, we see Buddhist monasteries. It is situated on a high rock at Takhtbai near Shehre Behlul. This area is very high on the snow-capped peak of the Hindu Kush and Himalayas. It is visible from here. It is an impressive scene. These monasteries tell us a lot and give us first-hand knowledge, mane ilm, about the civilization of this area. The monks. Mane Rahib used to lead simple life in order to get salvation. Mane Nijat, they might have achieved it. The remains of these Buddhist monasteries are important not from religious point of view, Mane Mazhabi Nukta Nazar, but from archaeological point of view. So we may say that Shabkadar and Takhtbai are important in the cultural history of Gandhara age. Page number forty-one, chapter number four, Two Wheels Over Nine Glaciers by Darula Murphy, Urdu Tarjuma. ڈرولا مرفی ایک شوقین سائیکل سوار ہے وہ زیر نظر مضمون میں بابو سر کے درے سے گزر کر ایپٹ آباد جانے کا حال بیان کرتی ہے یہ سفر خاصا دشوار گزار تھا اس کی سائیکل کا نام روز ہے وہ صبح سات بجے اپنی سائیکل روز پر سوار ہو کر روانہ ہوئی اڑھائی گھنٹے میں اس نے چھ میل سفر کیا اور رستے کے پہلے گلیشئر مانے برف کا تودا پر پہنچ گئی اس کو عبور کرنے میں اسے کافی دشواری کا سامنا کرنا پڑا بھوک اور پیاس نے اسے نڈھال کر دیا برف کھا کر اس نے پیاس بجھانے کی کوشش کی ایک میل سفر کرنے کے بعد اس کی نظر ایک بڑے تودے پر پڑی جو قریباً دو میل چوڑا تھا راستہ بھی صاف نظر نہ آتا تھا بادل چھائے ہوئے تھے تیز ہوا چل رہی تھی بلندی پر چڑھنا بہت دشوار تھا اب اس کی توانائی جواب دے چکی تھے سائیکل سنبھالنا بھی دشوار تھا آخر وہ اپنی سائیکل کو گھسیٹتی ہوئی بابو سر کی چوٹی پر پہنچی پہنچنے میں کامیاب ہو گئی چوٹی سے ایک ہزار فٹ نیچے اس نے ایک سرسبز و شاداب وادی دیکھی جو تقریباً دو میل چوڑی اور آٹھ میل لمبی تھی 
इस वादी में एक नदी भी बह रही थी वो बहुत खुश हुई लेकिन जब वो नीचे वादी में गई तो मालूम हुआ कि उस नदी को अबूर करना मुश्किल है इस पर पुल ना था अचानक इसने एक गाय देखी गाय इसके लिए फरिश्ता रहमत साबित हुई वो गाय के पीछे पीछे हो ली जब गाय नदी अबूर करने लगी तो इसने अपना दायां हाथ गाय की गर्दन में डाल दिया और बायां हाथ में साइकिल पकड़ ली पानी ज़्यादा गहरा ना था गाय की मदद से वो नदी पार करने में कामयाब हो गई थोड़ी दूर चलने के बाद उतराई शुरू हो गई यहाँ उसे मुख्तलिफ रंग के फूलों के झुंड के झुंड दिखाई दिए इसे सात मील उतरना पड़ा इसने बर्फ़ पोश पहाड़ियाँ देखीं इसने एक बर्फ़ानी तोदे को भी पानी में गायब होते देखा अब वो एक ऐसे मकाम पर पहुँच गई जहाँ उसे कोई पुल नज़र आने की तो थी लेकिन उसे कोई पुल नज़र ना आया दिन की रोशनी आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ख़त्म हो रही थी उसे भूख भी लगी हुई थी उसकी टाँगें ज़ख्मी हो चुकी थीं उसने अपनी साइकिल को उठा लिया उसने डेढ़ घंटे तक सफ़र जारी रखा एक बर्फ़ानी तोदे के वस्त में उसे तीन खच्चर और चार आदमी नज़र आए वो पेज नंबर फोर्टी टू जोर से चिल्लाई ताकि वो उसकी तरफ मुतव हों उसका साइकिल गिर पड़ा और वो ख़ुद फिसल कर नीचे आ गई और उनमें आकर शामिल हो गई इन्होंने इसकी बहादुरी और हौसला की तारीफ़ की फिर उन्होंने लकड़ी के तख्तों का पुल तैयार किया खच्चर इस पुल से गुजरने को तैयार न थे डरोला मर्फी ने एक तरकीब सोची वो पुल पर चलने लगी खच्चर भी उसके पीछे पीछे चलने लगे इस तरह उसकी जहानत से सब ने पुल को अबूर कर लिया इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन राइट द समरी ऑफ द लेसन टू व्हील्स ओवर नाइन ग्लेशियर्स और फॉर अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ब्यूटी डेंजर एक्साइटमेंट एंड हार्डशिप्स ऑफ एन्जॉयबल वराइटी टूडे विन्स एट अ कैंटो पेज एटीन दिस लाइन हैज़ बीन टेकन फ्राम डरोला मर्फीज बुक Full tilt. Narrate in about three pages of your answer. Book the journey of Darula Murphy through the mountains from Babusar to Abbottabad. Or, as I am resolutely chewing chewing my breakfast of beans and one chapat, an incoherent but kindly old man came along and told me that a pony caravan had left the hamlet about three hours ago in a desperate attempt to cross the pass. Page eighteen. This sentence has been taken from Darula Murphy's full tilt and extract, which is included in East and West. Give details of the journey and experiences as described by her in Two Wheels Over Nine Glaciers, Peshawar University, nineteen ninety four. Dear students, this audio recording has been done for you by Humanitarian Development Organisation, Abbottabad. HTU is striving hard to bring. positive change in sectors of health education and livelihood since 2011 non funded and purely on self help basis organization has not only converted the textbooks of kpk into audio form but also of the whole country from fa to masters level including courses of ilama iqbal open university the core objective of this educational campaign is to enable visually challenged students to keep continue their studies up to the higher levels and play their positive role in the prosperity of their nation and country these all recordings are being provided totally free of cost to visually challenged students other students rather than visually challenged students can also get benefit of this educational convenience humanitarian development organization abbottabad email hdo atd at @gmail dot com website hdo org dot net contact zero three four five Nine five four one, eight three eight. Page number forty three. Or at this height, no trees grow, and the rocks strewn pastures, which in a few weeks will be a rich green, were wearily yellow after the long winter. Page nineteen. Describe the journey of Darula Murphy towards the Babusar top. 
How did she feel when she had reached there? Gomal University, 2002. Answer. The journey of the Rula Murphy. The Rula Murphy was a brave traveler, Mane Saya. She liked to experience Mane Tajarba Karna, a combination, Mane Ittahad, of beauty, Mane Husn, danger, excitement and hardship, Mane Mushkilat, of the enjoyable type. She had a chance, Mane Moka, to experience all these things during her journey from Babusar Pass to Babusar Top. She wanted to go to Kagan on her way to Abbottabad. She was staying at the foot of the hill near Babusar Pass in a little village. An old man informed her that the pony caravan had left for crossing Babusar Pass three hours ago. He said that she should have accompanied that caravan. She took her breakfast and started her journey at seven in the morning with her bicycle, Rose. All went well for the first six miles because there were clear print of the feet of caravan ponies. But later on, Mane Bad Aza, the way became rather difficult. The footprints were lost. She walked up slowly on the ascend Mane Charhau, and it took her two and a half hours to cover the distance, Mane Fasla, of six miles. On the way she heard the sound, Mane Avaz, of a cuckoo and nomads, Mane Khana Badosh calling their flock of sheep and goats. She reached the first glacier, Mane Barafka Toda, in a... Page number 44. Good position. She had grown tired, Mane Thakadena, and hungry. She ate snowball to satisfy her thirst. It was a strange experience. Number 2. Clear track. Darula continued, Mane Jari Rakha, her journey. The track was clear for the next few miles. She reached another glacier which was more than two miles wide, Mane Chora. She had to cross it. It was risky, Mane Khatarnak, and tiresome, Mane Thaka Denewala. Now the track had disappeared, Mane Ghaib Hona, but when she examined closely, she found that the footprints had gone along the glacier. She did not like to go direct to, the, to cross the glacier, but there was no other way to follow the track except that. The weather... Mane Mosam was rough. Dark clouds were hovering over her head, thundering. Mane Garajna, loudly. The little snowflakes began to fall. She went higher and higher. The ascent, Mane Charna, proved to be very difficult enough. It was a hard and tedious Mane Thaka Denewala climb. She had to lift her bicycle rose. At last she reached Babusar top. She was very happy. She made her bicycle rose stand in front of her and took a number of photographs. Number 3. A Beautiful Valley By now the thunder had stopped and the wind dropped. She had to come down but it was not an easy job. She was standing at 1000 feet high rock. She was 15 miles from the head of Kagan Valley. She saw a beautiful green valley, Mane Vadi, below. She also saw a stream of clear water flowing in the center. She came down slowly and carefully. It took her half an hour to reach the stream. She had to face another problem of crossing it. She was standing beside the bank. There was no bridge over it. She was puzzled, Mane Parishan, but soon she saw a cow. It was grazing at a... Page number 45 Distance of 20 yards from her. She wondered, Mane Heran Hona, how the cow had come there. The cow too seemed to move forward for crossing the stream. It was a sort of blessing, Mane Rehmat, in disguise. She held her cycle in one hand and put the other hand round the neck of the cow. The water was four feet deep. She became wet. Thus, she was successful to cross the stream. The valley was vast and beautiful. It seemed that a big carpet of flowers spread before her. Number 4. Lake of Clear Water now she was to travel round a lake, Mane Jheel, of clear water, the snow-capped tops, Mane Baraf Posh Chotya, of the mountains were visible, Mane Dikhai Dena, in the clear water. Just at that time, a glacier slipped into the water of the lake. Then she came to a place where she expected Mane Tavakko Karna, a bridge, but there was no bridge. She had to ford another stream once more. The daylight was disappearing. She climbed a mountain. She was hungry and tired, but she did not lose heart. 
She saw footprints of the ponies. She saw seven black figures very damply, Mane Dhundli, in the middle of the glacier near the stream. She shouted to the men below to get their attention. Then she began pushing Mane Dhakelna, her cycle over the slope. She rolled herself like a rolling ball and came down. The men of the caravan welcomed Mane Khushamdeet Kaha, her. They praised her bravery and courage, Mane Hosla. Number 5. Pony Caravan Faced a Problem Soon the pony caravan faced a problem. The glacier lay across the stream which has melted, Mane Pigaljana, at a few places. The men in caravan had placed wooden boards across these places. The ponies were frightened and hesitated, Mane Hichkichana. Page number 46. To walk over the wooden boards. The men were lashing them. The ruler hit upon a pla- plane. She suggested, Mane Tajvizdi, that they should move and leave the ponies alone. The ponies might cross the glacier of their own accord, Mane Mirzi. The suggestion was accepted. She herself began to walk over wooden boards. The ponies followed her. Question number two. How did the cow help Derula Murphy in the course of her journey from Babusa to Basil? Or, describe briefly the cow episode as told by Darula Murphy in Two Wheels Over Nine Glaciers. Answer. Number 1. The Help of Cow Darula Murphy was a brave traveller. She liked the experience. She describes her journey from Babusar to Babusar top. She was standing at 1,000 feet high rock. She saw a beautiful, Manehub Surat, valley below. She also saw a nulla or a small stream of clear water flowing in the center. She did not realize the fact that there was no bridge to cross it. She came down slowly and carefully when she reached the nulla. She had to face the problem of crossing it. She was standing beside the bank. There was no bridge over it. She was puzzled and confused. The pony caravan had crossed the nulla, but their traces were not visible. She wondered how these men and the ponies had crossed the nulla. She tried hard to find the footprints of the ponies, but all in vain. Mani Besud. She did not lose heart. She looked here and there to find out any sign of life. At last, she saw a cow grazing. Mani Cherna. Page number 47. In the valley at the distance of 20 yards. She was much pleased to see it. She wondered how the cow had reached there. It seemed that the cow was thinking of crossing the nala. The cow was a blessing in disguise for her. Number 2. Caught hold the neck of the cow. She paddled her cycle rapidly, Mani Tezi se, over the grass and reached the cow. She opened her saddle, Mani Kati, bag, and tied it to her head with a rope. She became ready to get into the water. She caught hold the neck of the cow with her right arm. She took her bicycle in the left hand and entered the water. The water was four feet deep. It was flowing at full speed. She had nothing to fear. The water was so cold that her fingers numb. Mane behis hona for a little while. The cow helped her to keep balance in the fast torrent. Mane tez dhara of the water. She crossed the nala quite safe and sound. Mane sahi salamat. After coming out of the nala, the cow went on her way and Darula Murphy took her way. Thus this cow episode came to an end. Question number 3. How did the journey of Darula Murphy across the Babusar Pass come to an end? Or, describe the happy end of the journey of Darula Murphy across the Babusar Pass. Answer. Number 1. Journey of Darula Murphy. Darula Murphy was a brave traveller. She liked experiences. The travelled from Babusar to Babusar top. The last part of the journey of Darula Murphy was a... Page number 48. Good one. It came to an end with a happy note. She was to travel round a lake, Manij Hill, of clear water. The snow-capped tops, Burf Posh Chotia, were visible in the clear water. She had to cross a nala or a small stream. She came to the place where she expected Mane Tavakko Karna, a bridge. But there was no bridge over the Nala. A glacier had covered the Nala. She was worried to know that there was no bridge. The only way to cross the Nala was to go across the big glacier. The daylight was disappearing. 
she climbed up a mountain. She was hungry and tired, but she did not lose heart. She saw footprints, माने पैरों के निशान, of the ponies. She saw seven black figures, माने शक्लें, very damply, माने धुंधली, in the middle of the glacier. She shouted to the men of the pony caravan below to get their attention, माने तवज्जो. When they attended to her, she let her cycle drop on the slope. It was stopped by the men below by placing bed rolls in the way. She rolled herself like a rolling ball. माने लड़कती हुई बॉल एंड केम डाउन एट द फुट ऑफ द हिल द मैन ऑफ कैरावान वेलकम्ड हर द प्रेज हर ब्रेवरी माने बहादुरी एंड करेज माने हौसला द लीडर ऑफ द कैरावान ऑर्डर्ड वन ऑफ इज मैन टू कैरी रोज द साइकिल ऑफ टेरोला मर्फी अक्रॉस द नाला नंबर टू अ न्यू प्रॉब्लम सून द फेस अ न्यू प्रॉब्लम द पोनीस रिफ्यूज टू एडवांस माने आगे बढ़ना because the glacier seemed to have become weak it had melted mane pigal jana at some places the men in caravan had placed wooden planks mane lakde ke takhte across these places the ponies were frightened mane khauf zada and hesitated mane hichkichana to walk over the wooden boards the men were lashing mane kode marna them put the ponies totally refused to go further any under any pressure mane dabao Tarula Murphy hit upon a plan mane ek tajweez sochi she gave an intelligent idea to the men in page number 49 caravan she suggested mane tajweez that they should leave the ponies and move along on the glacier the ponies might follow them and cross the glacier at their own accord the suggestion was accepted the men advanced themselves as soon as the ponies saw that they were left alone on the glacier they were afraid they also moved and joined the men the men of the caravan thanked darula murphy thus the last journey of darula came to an end with a happy note page number 49 continued chapter number 5 the pipal pani tiger by jim carbet urdu tarjuma jim carbet ek shikari tha is mazmoon mein wo ek sher ka kissa bayan karta hai ye sher choti si nadi pipal pani ki talehti mein rehta tha abhi wo ek hi saal ka tha कि छोटे छोटे जानवरों का शिकार करने लगा था एक दफ़ा मौसम सरमा में मुसनफ़ ने एक खाया हुआ हिरन देखा इसका ख्याल था कि शेर यहाँ दोबारा आएगा वो शेर के इंतज़ार में बैठ गया शेर इधर आया और अपने शिकार को सूंघने लगा मुसनफ़ ने इसके नज़दीक गोली चला दी ताकि इसे आइंदा के लिए यह सबक हासिल हो हो जाए कि शिकार के पास वापस नहीं आना चाहिए एक साल के बाद मुसनफ़ ने फिर इस शेर को देखा अब ये शेर जवान हो चुका था अब इसके साथ शेरनी भी थी वो शिकार खाकर आराम कर रहे थे दरख्त पर एक परिंदा बैठा था इसके परों की फड़फड़ाहट से शेरनी की आंखें खुल गईं और वो भाग निकली शेर ने भी ऐसा ही किया ऐसे मौका पर गोली चलाना मुनासिब ना था क्योंकि अगर गोली ख़त हो जाए तो शेर इंसानों के लिए ख़तरा बन जाता है इस वाक़े के एक हफ्ते बाद शेरनी ने शेर को छोड़ दिया और शेर अके शेर अकेला रहने लगा एक दिन शेर ने भैंसे का शिकार किया दोनों में खूब लड़ाई हुई भैंसा मारा गया मगर भैंसे के सींग लगने से शेर भी जख्मी हो गया इस वाक़े के तीन साल बाद शेर दोपहरा वापस आया एक किसान ने शेर पर गोली चला दी शेर जख्मी हो गया इसके कंधे की हड्डी टूट गई वो गांव के जनूब की तरफ चला गया और छोटे मोटे जानवरों का शिकार करने लगा लोगों ने इसे मारने की बहुत कोशिश की मगर पेज नंबर फिफ्टी कामयाब ना हुए नवंबर के महीना में एक देहाती को एक जानवर आता नज़र आया उसने इसको सुअर समझकर गोली चला दी निशाना खता हुआ देहातियों ने इसका पीछा किया मुसनफ़ भी वहाँ पहुँच गया इसने अंदाज़ा लगाया कि यह स्वर ना था बल्कि शेर था उसने शेर को मारने का मुसम्म इरादा कर लिया और इसकी तलाश में एक इलाके का चप्पा चप्पा छान मारा मगर कहीं भी शेर का निशान ना मिला आखिर इसकी मुलाकात एक बूढ़ी औरत और उसके बेटे से हुई उन्होंने बताया कि शेर के धाड़ने की आवाज़ पहाड़ों के दामन में सुनी गई है मुसनफ़ ने अपनी राइफल ली और पहाड़ी का रुख किया इस लड़के ने इसकी रहनुमाई की और पिपल पनी नदी के पास ले आया 
وہاں ایک درخت تھا مصنف نے اس درخت پر مچان بنایا اور لڑکے کو نگران بنا کر وہاں بٹھا دیا اور کہا جو ہی شیر آئے اسے بتا دے شیر کی آمد پر لڑکے نے اشارہ کیا مصنف نے گولی چلا کر شیر کو ہلاک کر دیا مصنف نے کامیابی حاصل کر لی مگر وہ افسردہ بھی تھا امپورٹنٹ کوشچنس کوشچن نمبر ون رائٹ دا سمری آف دا لیسن دا پیپل پانی ٹائگر اور بیونڈ دا فیکٹ دیٹ ہی واز بورن ان اے روین رننگ ڈیپ ان ٹو دا فٹ ہلس اینڈ واز ون آف دا فیملی آف تھری آئی نو نتھنگ آف ہز ارلی ہسٹری پیج تھرٹی سیون دس سینٹینس ہیز بین ٹیکن فرام جم کابٹس مین ایٹرز آف کھماؤ نریٹ ان یور اون ورڈس دا اسٹوری آف پیپل پانی ٹائگر پشاور یونیورسٹی نائنٹین نائنٹی ٹو نائنٹین نائنٹی نائن Disregarding the lesson he had received when a cub incautiously returned to a kill over which Zamindar and some of his tenants were sitting at night. Page 42-43 Page number 51 This sentence has been taken from Jim Carbett's The People Pani Tiger. From this point onward, relate the story of the tiger till his death. Or, describe the adventure of Jim Carbett as described by him in the story. The Pipal Pani Tiger in your own words. Or, give a brief account of the life of the Pipal Pani Tiger and Jim Carbett's encounter with him. Answer The Pipal Pani Tiger The Pipal Pani Tiger lived in an area near the Pipal Pani stream. The writer saw him in November when he was a cub, Mane Sher Ka Bacha, nearly one year old. He was separated from his parents in his childhood. مانے بچپن اینڈ لیوڈ این انڈیپینڈنٹ مانے آزاد لائف ہی ایٹ اسمال اینیملس فرام کلوز کواٹر دا رائٹر سو اے کروز سٹنگ آن اے برانچ آف اے ٹری اینڈ رابنگ مانے رگڑتے ہوئے ہز بیک مانے چونچ وین ہی ریچڈ نیئر ہی سو بلڈ اینڈ بونس آن دا گراؤنڈ ہی کیم ٹو دا کنکلوژن مانے نتیجہ دیٹ اے ڈیئر واز کل گلاس نائٹ بٹ دا کل ہیڈ بین ریموڈ دا رائٹر تھاٹ that the tiger would come back to its kill. He laid in wait for it. After a long time, the tiger came to his kill. He found it missing. The writer fired a shot to give him a lesson not to come again near the remains, Mane Lash, of the pre, Mane Shikar. The tiger did not forget this lesson throughout his life except for once. Number two, the tiger after one year. The writer met the tiger again almost After one year, he had grown into a full-sized tiger now. He had changed. Page number 52. Physically, Mane Jismani Torpar, very much. Now he could kill big animals. He had found a mate for himself. A vulture, Mane Gid, led the writer to kill the tiger. As he reached close, he found the pair lying near the remains of the kill. The writer was trying to take aim. When a bird sitting on a nearby tree flew and struck with the tree, the tigers got alert and ran away. The tiger also ran away, behind her. Later on, Mane Badaza, the writer came to know that the tiger had left his mate. Number three, followed the tiger. The writer began to follow the tiger. The tiger felt the fact and roared, Mane Dharna, allowed to warn him. The same year in the month of March, The tiger killed a full-sized buffalo, Mane Bhens. His head had been wounded by the horns of the buffalo. The tiger dragged Mane Ghasitna, his kill to a safe place, but went away without eating it. The tiger never returned to his kill. Number 4. The tiger after 3 years. 3 years later, the tiger forgot the lesson. He came back and was hit by a bullet, Mane Goli. of zamindar his shoulder bone mane kande ki haddi fractured mane toot gayi he entered a vacant mane khali go down but later alarmed by the people made his way to the bushes near the village there he ate small animals like goat sheep and calves etc number 5 damage the village cattle the tiger's wound healed soon he did great damage to the village cattle Many people tried to kill him but could not succeed. 
One evening a villager set out for killing a pig, Mane Suar. Many people accompanied Mane Hamra Hogai, him. He fired at the tiger in the darkness, Mane Andhera. Thinking that it was a pig, the animal roared away into the bushes. A lot of people, page number 53, followed him but could not find him. The writer too tried to follow the tiger. He found a few hair of the tiger near its footmarks. Mane, Peron ke nishan. He found out that it was the tiger and not a pig. Mane, Suar. Number 6. Search the animal. The writer searched the animal for three days. On the afternoon of the fourth day, a village woman and his son told the writer that they had heard the tiger roaring in the nearby Mane Karibi area of the river. The boy guided the writer for reaching there. He made the boy sit in a tree with the instruction to warn Mane Ittaladena him quietly, Mane Khamoshi se, if he saw the tiger. Then he initiated Mane Nakalutari, the call of a tigress. After some time, the tiger appeared from behind the bushes. He came very near to the writer. The writer took aim and shot the tiger. The tiger tried to run but fell dead. Question number two. What do you know about the habits of wild animals, especially tigers, after reading this story by Jim Corbett? Answer. Habits of wild animals. Jim Corbett was a great hunter. Mane Shikari. He has described, Mane Bayan Karna, the habits of the wild animals. He says that a tiger is a dangerous, Mane Khatanak, animal. It is not furious right from its birth. A cub, the child, does not harm, Mane Nuksan Panjana, anybody. But when it finds its parents hunting and eating, it also does the same. Some of the features of tiger are as under. Number one, home. A tiger lives in a thick belt or in a ravine or in a... Page number 54. Hollow trunk of trees. When he feels danger, he hides in the dense bushes. Number 2. Hunting. Hunting is the habit of a tiger. A cub hunts small animals like pig, manisua, sheep, goat and peahen, etc. It does not hunt big animals, but when it grows to full size, it starts hunting big animals like deer, cows, buffalo, mane bhens, and others. Number three, curiosity. Another feature of the animal is curiosity. Every animal, be it small or big usually, mane aam par, feels curious about these things. Jim Cabot says, curiosity, mane ishtiyak, is not a human monopoly, mane ijaradari. Many an animal's life is cut short by indulging in it. Number four, unwise and foolish. Animals are usually unwise and foolish. Mane bevakuf. If they had been wise enough, they would have saved their lives while indulging in curiosity. They lose their life in curiosity. They neglect mane nazar andaz karna. Their defense mane defa. The writer fired a shot near the cub to give him a lesson and never to come near the remains of the kill. The cub forget it and return to the kill and was injured. Even the hunters themselves are hunted upon by the tiger or lion. Number 5. Eats only a part of its prey. When a lion kills an animal, he eats only a part of it. He does not eat the whole of it. He goes away leaving the remains of the prey lying there. He comes back once again to his kill. Page number 55. Number 6. Dangerous. If a tiger is only injured and not killed, it becomes dangerous. Mane khatana. For man. He may become man-eater or do great damage due to pain and hunger. Number 7. Answer the call. Both male and female animals are attracted by calling of opposite sex. They, on, they answer back these calls. Chapter number 6. The idea of Pakistan by Ayn Stephens Urdu Tarjuma Pakistan 1947 में मारे जे वजूद में आया इस मुल्क की बुनियाद 
برطانوی لوگ یہ تصور بھی نہ کر سکتے تھے کہ پاکستان بننے سے کوئی فائدہ ہوگا یا اگر پاکستان بن گیا تو یہ ملک زندہ رہے گا اس کی وجہ یہ تھی کہ یورپی مسلمانوں کو دلی طور پر پسند نہ کرتے تھے یورپی لوگ مسلمانوں کے خلاف ہمیشہ تعصب کے جذبات رکھتے تھے ان کا خیال تھا کہ اسلام صرف طاقت کے زور سے پھیلا ہے اور دوسرے مذاہب کو ختم کر دیتا ہے انہیں مسلمانوں کی تاریخ ظلم و استعداد کے واقعات سے بھری نظر آتی ہے ان کے مورخین اور مذہبی لوگوں نے ان کے ذہن میں اس قسم کے خیالات جاگزین کر دیے ہیں یہ لوگ مسلمانوں کا تابناک دور نظر انداز کر دیتے ہیں جس وقت یورپ جہالت اور تاریکی میں ڈوبا ہوا تھا مسلمانوں نے علم کی شمع کو روشن کیا یورپ کا آدمی خیال کرتا ہے کہ اسلام عیسائیت کا مخالف ہے جب کہ حقیقت اس کے برعکس ہے کسی دوسرے مذہب کے آدمی کے مقابلہ میں مسلمان عیسائیوں کے زیادہ قریب ہیں مسلمان حضرت عیسیٰ کو اللہ کا برگزیدہ اور برحق نبی مانتے ہیں اسلام عیسائیت کی نسبت زیادہ سادہ مذہب ہے اور بھارت میں عیسائیوں کو اتنی آزادی نہیں جتنی پاکستان میں ہے ہندوستان میں ہندو اور مسلمان دو الگ الگ قومیں ہیں ان کے الگ الگ مذہب ہیں ایک عرصہ تک یہ ایک دوسرے کے قریب آنے کی کوشش کرتے رہے اس کے باوجود ان کی انفرادیت قائم رہی ہندو اگرچہ لادینی حکومت کے پیج نمبر ففٹی سکس دعوے دار تھے لیکن وہ اپنے مذہب پر سختی سے کار بند رہے ہندوؤں کے برعکس مسلمانوں میں رواداری کا جذبہ بہت زیادہ ہے مسلمان رہنما جدید نظریات کے حامل ہے سر سید احمد خان سید امیر علی علامہ اقبال قائد اعظم محمد علی جناح سب ترقی پسند تھے وہ وسیع القلب تھے ان لوگوں نے علیحدہ وطن کا تصور دیا یہ لوگ تنگ نظر نہ تھے یہ وقت کے تقاضے سمجھتے تھے ترکی کا مصطفیٰ کمال پاشا عطا ترک بھی ترقی پسند تھا اس نے اپنے ملک میں پردہ ختم کر دیا تھا اور رومی ٹوپی پہننا ممنوع قرار دے دی تھی مسلمانوں نے پاکستان کا مطالبہ صرف مسلمانوں کے تحفظ کے لیے کیا تھا وہ چاہتے تھے کہ وہ ہندوؤں کے دست نگر نہ ہوں وہ ہندوؤں کے استحصال سے چھٹکارا حاصل کرنا چاہتے تھے انہوں نے الگ وطن کا مطالبہ اس لیے کیا تھا کہ وہ اپنی تہذیب اقتصادی حالت اور تاریخی وراثت کو برقرار رکھ سکیں ہندوؤں اور مسلمانوں میں کوئی قدر مشترک نہ تھی اگر مذہب کو تنگ نظری کا نام دیا جائے تو بھی اسلام تنگ نظر نہیں ہے پاکستانی لوگ اتنے تنگ نظر نہیں جتنے برطانوی لوگ ہیں پاکستان متاثر لوگوں کا نہیں مسلمانوں کا دیس ہے یہاں بھارت کی نسبت عیسائیوں پر بہت کم پابندی ہے بلکہ یہ کہنا درست ہوگا کہ ہے ہی نہیں اسلام محض ایک مذہبی نظریہ ہی نہیں بلکہ ایک مکمل ضابطہ حیات ہے پاکستانی لوگ سب قوموں کے ساتھ دوستی چاہتے ہیں تاکہ وہ اپنے ملک کو ترقی کی راہ پر گامزن کر سکیں مغربی اقوام کو اس بات کا شعور ہونا چاہیے امپورٹنٹ کوشچن کوشچن نمبر ون واٹ وار دا کازز دیٹ لیٹ ٹو دا ڈیمانڈ فار پاکستان بائی دا مسلمس اور دا آئیڈیا واز ٹو پرووائڈ اے ہوم لینڈ فار دا انڈین سب کانٹیننٹ مسلمس اور موسٹ آف دیم اے پلیس ویئر آفٹر دا برٹش امپیریل پاور ہیڈ گون دے کوڈ فریلی ڈیولپ دے وے آف لائف ان این اسلامک انوائرمنٹ اپارٹ فرام دا ہندوز پیج فورٹی نائن 